go. Keyless go is useful. You don't need to get the key out. As long as it's in your hand, you're good. Boom. Okay, let's go. Two hour drive, let's get it on. Oh, it's cold. Heated seat on, that's the button there. And then right here, there's a button to put a heated steering wheel on. Because it's a little bit chilly in the morning. It does make sense to do that. Now you may notice I've got my TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system light on. Because it says I've got two flat tires. But actually, I just think it's because this car hasn't driven in so long that the tire pressures have gone down. Nothing worrying, 2.2, and then on the right side, 2.3, and then in the front, 1.8, and then the left side, 1.9. So we may just need to stop to give those a little checkup. But to be honest, we are running a little bit late, so not ideal. All right, we're already like, we're straight onto the motorway because, yeah, as I say, we were running a tiny bit late. I'm straight into cruise control, and this is where a Turbo S kind of comes into its own. Yes, we all love the GT product Porsches. I'm the first to say that I love a GT3 RS, a GT3 Touring. Absolutely adore them. Oh, sorry, tunnel. It's probably gonna completely screw up the lighting. Sorry, as I was saying, I am the first to uh, admit that I love a GT3 or a GT3 RS. I think they're the Porsches that we all dream about, but a Turbo S does really come into its own on a drive like this. We're doing 500 kilometers today. Uh, going from Monaco to Marseille and back in one day uh, for some work stuff. And this is where Turbo S is awesome. It's got the speed if you need it. It's got the accelerations when you come out of the tolls. It's got kind of all that fun stuff. But it's so comfortable. This has obviously the sports seats. So you've got the little shoulder supports here, but not the bucket seats, um, which are just even more hardcore. It's got the heated steering wheel, it's got the heated seats, um, it's got the Burmeister sound system. It's got all the luxuries that you really want on a long drive like this. It's got the adaptive cruise control, so see it's adapting the speed to the car ahead of us. Um, it's got the, what else does it have? The buttons on the steering wheel to be able to control everything, the Apple CarPlay. Basically, yeah, everything to make a long drive like this really enjoyable but you're still in a 911 uh, you've still got that power you still got that noise you still got that presence and it's just such a good car for this kind of road trip it's also then got the two back seats which you're not going to use on a long trip like this for humans you're only going to use for bags really and for that it's actually really convenient i'm not using them today but whenever you need to you do have those little back seats or the boot in front so we're gonna be doing 500 kilometers, which means today I may surpass 30,000 on the car. It's got 29,492 right now. So we may pass 30,000 on this car. And I haven't driven it in a long time because I was in Geneva for ages and then traveling. And that's why I think the tire pressures, I'm keeping an eye on them. I'm a little late. Right now they're fine. I just think it's, yeah, the system kind of needs a bit of a reset and it's because the car hasn't been driven in a while. Um, that, that it's giving me all of the kind of warning lights, but I just need to stop, kind of give them a little top up and then we're good to go. But all the tires are about equal. They're not budging, so I think we're fine. I really do love this car so much. I've been, yeah, in the time I've been the caretaker of it, that I've been lucky enough to have it. Just as a package, it is so good. All right, so cruise, that's a cruise control. I set a speed, this is really useful for these long drives, set a speed and then the car will instantly kind of adapt to that and I don't need to do anything on the pedals. Um, the car will then adjust to the car in front of me. Um, so if I set it to, let's say, I don't know, 110, 120, 130 and then a car pulls out in front of me and it's doing 90 well, the automatic cruise control will instantly adjust my car speed to 90. So look, we can demonstrate if you like. I'm currently doing 132, 134, let's set it to 136. We're pulling up to this car in front. I'm not touching the pedals. Car's going down 125, 122, 120. 
See? This is me explaining automated cruise control to you guys, which has existed forever, but is what it is. So here we go. Now the car pulls away. Our car accelerates again. I can choose the distance that I want it to take from the car in front, which is kind of nice. Um, so yeah, it's on a scale of four different distances. I put it on the closest one, just I figure that kind of works the nicest for me. This seems like a good distance. I don't know if you can see too much, but it seems like a good distance from the car head. My Alcantara steering wheel is getting a tiny bit. It needs a little bit of maintenance, I think. It's very comfortable, very nice. I'm actually gonna switch the heated steering wheel off now because I'm burning my hands a bit. But does need a little bit of maintenance at some point. I'm trying to think if I've had some like quirks or whatever with this car, but honestly, as a total package, it's just unbelievable. I absolutely love it and I've loved my time with it and I have no idea what I could or would replace it with. Um, yeah, the market for these is actually doing really well at the moment, um, really steady. So I don't know if there's much point kind of getting rid of the car yet because I can enjoy it, drive it, put miles on it now without worrying about it losing like crazy amounts of value. So that's a really nice position to to be in as well. Um, just pretty lucky that the car's decided to hold its value quite well. That's always pleasant. Okay, the trip so far, 46 minutes, distance of 80 kilometers, and I've been doing about 10 liters per 100 kilometers. I have no idea what that is in miles per gallon, but that's not bad at all, honestly, for a car pushing 600 horsepower that has the kind of performance that this has. 10 liters per 100 kilometers is really, really not bad. So yeah, I was saying I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not sure what I'd replace this car with. I've, I've really enjoyed it so much. I, um, yeah, I think it would need to be another similar kind of Porsche. They're just so good and I do a lot of miles. I drive the car pretty much daily. And for that, having this is just fantastic. Having a Turbo S is such a good platform um, for the kind of usage that I get out of it. I'm also gonna run it all the way down to empty to then fill it up so we can see with the new fuel prices just how much it costs. I think I should be able to get to Marseille on this tank and then we'll have to fill up on our way back. It's nice doing a little road trip with you guys again getting back into it. It's been a while since we've done one of these POV kind of um, style little trips. And a while since I've driven a bunch in this car. Wow. M3, was that a DTM car or something of the sort? Anyways, it looked very, very nice. All right guys, 9.8 liters. Uh, is this where I'm going? I'm lost. Anyways, I'm a little late. I'll probably catch up with you guys in a little bit when I'm less lost. <laughs> no, when we're filling the car up and doing all that stuff. Because I need to find the others. Right, we're gonna fill the car up for the first time now. Since the crisis has skyrocketed. Do you want a receipt? I'll gladly take a receipt for this one. Okay, here we go. Right, 98. This is not gonna be any fun. Okay, come on, be kind. We just finished 82 euros. I was expecting worse. We will take that. Did I put the right fuel in? Yes. Okay, fantastic. But comme ça me donnait là tous les warnings comme quoi. Ah, pas de chance. Ah, il y en a plus? Il s'est mis en erreur. Ah, pas de souci. Right. I don't know if you speak any French, if you got any of that, but basically, I stopped at the only petrol station where the uh, the pump to fill up your tire with air doesn't, yeah, it's not working anymore. It couldn't take what the this car needed. So uh, yeah, fantastic. Just what I felt like really late at night. So now we're just going to get off at the next one and hope for the best. All right, we're at 2.5, 2.6, 2 and 2.1. 2 and 2.1 at the front, 2.5, 2.6 at the back. What do we need? We need, whoa, minimum three on the back and 2.4 in the front. Okay, yes, we are low, ladies and gents. All right, here we go. I said between three and three, two, three, three. So let's put three, two, and at least we're, we're chilling. And if the light is still on, I'm gonna be one pissed off young man. All right, this is the one that's been a little bit annoying. 
Uh, where's the thing? Oh, here. Nope. Nope. Sit down. Okay. All right, three, one, three, two, four, two, five. Not the most even, but we will take it. Much better than having a warning light on, that's what I'll say. Man, it is freezing. I don't know what's been going on. And I don't even know if you can see me, but it is cold. Heated steering wheels on, heated seats on. Burmeister sound system, Apple CarPlay, I'm not complaining, this is amazing. I've just arrived, super basic video today, just literally driving, but look, two hours, 11 minutes. Oh, sorry, my battery on my key is not doing great. 10 liters per 100 kilometers. Someone, if you can, put in the comments down below, uh, or I might try and put it on the screen somewhere here, what that means in miles per gallon. It's not bad at all for a supercar, yep, yeah, 600 horsepower basically on this one. Not 60, another six, uh, six seconds, three seconds. Um, yeah, not bad at all. Let me get in the light. I don't know if you can see me well. Anyways, super basic video. Hope you enjoyed it. Love these POV kind of style things. They're, they're kind of fun to bring you along with me. And uh, yeah, a little scare at first, but we made it through. Anyways, see you soon, guys. Subscribe if you aren't already. Cheers. Bye-bye.